Hello everybody. I just uh, wanted to do a check in on a few different things. I wanted to let you guys know how this Piccadilly journal is going. And um, Christmas was not that long ago and uh, my birthday just passed. So I have some new stickers and washi tape that was gifted to me um, as well as a couple just various items that I've been using that I kind of wanted to review for you guys. Link down below um, if you're interested in them and just let you know what I think of everything that I've been using so far. Okay, so first off, I wanna talk about this journal itself. So um, lately I've been more into decorating. I go in and out of phases of wanting to decorate a lot. And when I do decorate, the journal tends to get very fat and it starts to get pushed to its limits and we start to see what it's really made of. So um, one um, obvious thing that you can already see right off the bat is the thickness of this journal. Um, and the fact, if you've watched my previous video about this journal, I made this little um, closure band here to try to mitigate how much space it takes up when it gets fat like this. Um, so this closure band, this is my own fault. I did not feel like buying elastic. I have so many journal supplies and craft supplies around. I just was annoyed at having to buy one more thing. And you know, on, on Amazon, it's like, oh, you have to buy like 35 yards of it. And I just needed a little bit. So I just decided to use what I had on hand, which is this jewelry making glitter elastic. I thought it would be fine and um, it's okay, but it doesn't really have the holding power. Even though I braided together four strands of it, it's just nothing compared to actual elastic. So as you can see, when I open it up like this, yeah, it does expand a lot more. Um, you can see the cover still rising. So I think it does help a little bit, but compared to a journal that would have a built-in elastic or using an actual elastic, um, I definitely, um, think that would do a better job than what I have here. So part of this is, this is my first Piccadilly journal that I'm using. I have another one um, in my blank journal collection that I do still plan to use and I'm kind of learning what to do differently next time. So next time I definitely want to uh, use real elastic here, even if that means popping over this to Joanne Fabrics, not that far away. Maybe I can just get a small amount of elastic in a nice color and just use that and then not have all this elastic lying around because that's not something that I feel like I would use very frequently. But if we can just compare that to this markings by C.R. Gibson journal, which is also very fat. If we take off the closure here, I don't know. Maybe it has more to do with the binding style as well because the pages in this one are a lot thicker. The pa paper is much more heavy duty than in the markings journal. Um, I think that this journal has, if I'm correct, it has about 240 pages. That's where I thought it was. So that one has 240 pages, and I believe the markings also has 240 pages. They list it in the, I thought they listed it in the back. I guess they don't. I think the markings also has 250 pages. So I think this has a lot to do with the thickness of the pages as well, why it is just not holding together the way the markings do under this kind of stress when I add a lot to it. Um, you can see the spine here is like very broken. Uh, very curved and I did that on purpose to try to make sure that I can have it lay flat which it does not do such a good job of that's kind of my next my next challenge with this journal has been that it doesn't uh, lay flat so much um, this is better than it was but um, when I'm trying to write sometimes the pages will just fall shut like that now this ribbon could be contributing I guess but I found myself having to like hold it open with one hand while I'm writing, which is really annoying. Um, so I'm not sure how to mitigate that because I do want to be able to decorate it without this happening. A lot of this is because I put so much paper and cards in that it's just really heavy on this side that's been used. Um, so maybe that's just something that I have to deal with with this journal. I'm not really sure. The third challenge has been the fact that it doesn't take fountain pens. You can't write with a fountain pen in this at all. It just will not work. And I felt like it was going to damage my nib if I kept trying it. So I was not able to use my cotton pens, which isn't that big of a deal. I really like Pilot um, G2. And of course, it takes that really well. It also takes Uniball Signal really well, which is great. So I can use the Pilot G2 metallic finishes and the Uniball Signal white finish with no problems. And because the pages are cream colored, it actually you can write in on them in white and it looks pretty readable. Not great, but pretty readable. But one thing that I was starting to miss was my uh, brown ink that I usually use with a fountain pen. 
Um, so I got a couple of pens to supplement that that I'm just going to try to use with the Piccadilly. Um, these are called the Zebra Sarasa pens. They are a lot thinner than Pilot G2. They're half uh, 0.5 um, millimeter instead of 0.7. So it's very thin, but I was very impressed. I have a high standard for pens because of Pilot G2, but these do not skip at all. They're very smooth. They're a joy to write with, and I consider them on par with the Pilot G2s. And they have colors that the Pilot G2 for some reason doesn't have, such as matte gray, which is beautiful, and um, this chocolate brown color that Pilot G2 only has the caramel color. So this has helped me feel a little bit nicer um, and supplemented some of the colors that I wished I had, but couldn't use because of my fountain pen problem. So that's good. So now I guess uh, the last challenge I've had with this journal is that for some reason it seems like pages reject adhesives. So gluing in papers with a glue stick, which works just fine in the markings, they fall out a lot here. And putting washi tape down falls off a lot and even stickers fall off. And at first I thought maybe it's because a lot of my stickers are kind of cheap, they're from the dollar store but it soon became clear that all of my stickers were having a little bit of problems and it's not huge it's like not that big of a deal things hold on fine it's just not that kind of solid adhesion that i really kind of am used to with my other journals so it's a little frustrating especially since it feels like over time these are gonna these journals are gonna degrade a lot faster than my other ones um yeah but the more you do with your journals the more stickers and decorations you use over time they are going to degrade because stickers don't you know they don't hold up forever you know, if you use archival ink in like really sturdy paper, then you're going to have the best shot of having journals that last a long time, but that's not the only purpose for me. I also like decorating and just enjoying my journals. So yeah, these are probably going to degrade pretty quickly, but it's worth it for me. Um, so next I want to show you um, some pages I did, and then I'm going to talk about some of the items I use that are new to me um, and where they came from. So this first page has got um, these stickers on it, which I really love. First of all, the artwork is just absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I just love it. It reminds me of illustrations from like old children's books that I used to read when I was little. I also like that they're printed on a semi-transparent paper um, that appears to also be cream colored. So it really just blends in nicely with the page itself, which I find to be really exceptional. A lot of stickers have opaque borders that really take you out of the design as a whole. But these stickers are remarkably, they blend in really, really well. I really appreciate that. So those are from these Japanese stickers. Um, I don't know what they're called. I'll link them below. I'm going to refer to these as the woodland stickers. And they come in these little tiny tins that are like Altoid tins with Japanese writing on them, which is a good sign. Japan is one of the leaders in stationery, I would say. So there are three different tins. We have one with mushroom designs in it, which are just so cute. We have, well, everything is cute. I can stop saying that. Uh, red flowers, uh, all red. I don't know why red, but it's beautiful. This whole set is red. Um, and then red berries and twigs and non-flower plants. So we have these like helicopter branches, just so pretty and just makes me feel so at peace. It reminds me of when I was a kid, spending a lot of time outside in the woods and things. And I don't live close to woods anymore. I'd have to drive to get somewhere where I could walk in the woods, which is a travesty. But it just really makes me feel peaceful. I feel really good about this page now because these, these images bring me calmness and tranquility. And to me, that's what journaling is about. It's just about, you know, feasting my eyes on these images for a few minutes, writing, just a cathartic, calming experience. Down here, we have the all-seeing eye washi tape, which is from Michael's. That was from my Halloween haul, if you saw that video. And then <laughs> there was one left over, so I popped it on there. This is just a piece of notepaper. And then back here, we have a scrap from a book. And we have a flower um, right there. And this flower is also from new stickers. These are deco stickers, I guess. I don't know. It's a set of six little baggies that are organized according to their category and or color. So the categories are really interesting. <laughs> the weird naming. So what's great about these stickers is they have transparent background or border. So again, you don't have to worry at all about covering anything up. That's why I really wanted these a lot is because look how seamlessly that blends in with the old book page. I just really love that. I also like that this says winter management that was selected on purpose because I'm at the point where I'm done with winter. Spring needs to happen because I'm going to lose my mind if the sun keeps setting at the time that it does. So the categories for these stickers are tulip, 
which did you know that the stock market started with tulips? I learned that not that long ago. It's so weird. Then we have violet, which I guess is the color, not the type of plant. Then it gets weird. We have vigour, vigour, I guess is the British spelling. Okay, looks orange and yellow to me. I don't know what that has to do with vigour. And then we have sweet. These are daisies and white flowers. I guess white flowers are sweet. Then of course, you can't forget this one, which is pink. Makes sense to me. And then this last one, tawny, which I guess is like light brown or tan, but there's like purple in here. I like these because they have little tapes on them that makes it look like you tape down a dried flower, which is really a cool idea in my opinion. So as we move along through here, we have some of these stickers and these are from the Antiquarian sticker book, which was something that I purchased for me. And I just love this. I feel like the value is really good. I got it on Amazon for $17.50. The book is very solid. It's a hardcover. It feels like a real book. It's extremely heavy. You know, it has the end papers like this that are marbled, very traditional. And then you have over a thousand stickers of like really cool designs and confusing, perplexing designs. Like, what is that? What is that? What is, what are these hands doing? Why are there a weird jellyfish? Is that a brain? Are these brains? This looks like pigtails. Why are these men trying to catch bats? Why is that cat gonna haunt my nightmares forever? And of course they know who they're selling to on some level because there was a whole section somewhere in here that's just women and cats. Like cats, women, women and cats. It's here, it's just cats and then girls and cats. Same, same, same. I don't know, that's actually, I don't know what's going on there. That's a really, really, really weird picture. And what, are these cats just hanging out on the couch? I could just look at this for hours. Let me know, by the way, if you want me to do like a detailed flip through of this book because Amazon doesn't let you look inside. So you kind of just have to go on the images that they decide to share with you. I found that there were no disappointing pages at all, which is really cool. I usually get suspicious if Amazon won't let you preview a book but I can show you everything you'd get in that book if you want to see that video. But you have to let me know because that's like kind of a tedious video to make that will clog up my channel and I don't feel like most people would be interested. So in here I put this dancing lady with a little castanet on her hand and then uh, hopefully you can see um, this lady here with four top hats, which I don't know why she has four top hats. It makes no sense whatsoever to me, but it's funny. Um, then here I put in a card and this is bending over, which is weird. This doesn't usually happen in C.R. Gibson either. But um, in here I have a card, little moon sticker. This was a Christmas sticker. So these are like sticker flakes of all these different kinds of moons. Some of them in really strange colors and some just normal moon phases. So I really like that, big fan. So I put that there, got some gemstones and then we pull out the card and it says never stop looking up which is cool. And then here we have uh, just some, this is from a galaxy paper pack from Michaels, Recollections, nothing too fancy. I've had it for a long time, love it. Got some little words here with the moon and then when you open it up, you're a gem. Then we have a well-ripened fruits section from an old plant book. I just tend to tear that up for little paper pieces. And we have another one of those transparently backed flower stickers. So this will be fun. I usually use these for various things. Um, I'll write about a dream I had in here or just one small topic and I'll kind of keep it isolated off from the rest of the journal. Um, in the last card that I filled out, I put a collage of the different wrapping paper from the presents I got for my birthday. Um, yeah, so stuff like that. I could put pictures in there. Then here we have um, some washi tape. Uh, and this is part of a set of 12 washi tape rolls that I got for my birthday, uh, for Christmas actually. And these are so great. I never hear anybody talking about some of the cool washi tape you can find on Amazon. I really, really like these a lot and they're so cool. They're very thin and almost transparent again, which is always a win in my book, but look at some of these designs. You have, um, let's see if I, this is picking up on camera. You have a little, um, mandala just like little circular designs this is probably my least favorite just because i don't know then this i don't know if these whoops shaking camera i don't know if these are supposed to be i'm not sure where these stickers come from but they're like 
little storefronts from cities. And I'm not really a city person at all, but these are just so cute and cozy. They remind me of when my family and I used to take vacations to New York or to San Francisco. So really cozy feeling. Then of course, it wouldn't be complete without mushrooms. And we have a cat and feathers. Oh my gosh, this is so great. Cause I always have this thing, it's like an inside joke where I hate birds. I don't actually hate birds, but like I love hating them. And my cat actually hates birds and she'll sit in front of the window chattering at the birds for hours if I let her. And so this reminds me of her and I bonding over our hatred of birds, it's so funny. <laughs> she wishes she could kill them. And this is one of the ones that actually made me really want this set. Um, it's a bookshelf. It's just book after book after book. Very cool. And then more cats. Of course. There's lots of animals here. And normally I don't like animals, but these ones, the art is so interesting. You have the elephant. And there's beautiful flowers and like the lion, the owl. I don't know. These animals just seem like they have a lot of personality, a lot of meaning to them. Like I think the elephant is made out of almost a map. It just really makes me think. And that's the one I have down here. Um, and then here we have, this one's interesting because it's flowers and the paper it's printed on isn't, isn't white, isn't neutral like the other ones. It's almost a blush color. And there's little birds. Oh, mushrooms. It's so pretty. It's just gorgeous. I love that one. And this is so great. Too. Like all of these are amazing. When I got it, I thought I would probably realistically only really like one or two designs because the pictures on Amazon were so small. I couldn't really see what all of them were except for like the bookshelf and a couple of the others. Um, but I really am in, totally in love with all of these except for maybe the mandala. But I'll still use it, you know. So this one has drinks, little drinks. It's so cool. I love little drink washi tape. I have a couple of wine ones. I don't really drink that much alcohol, but the I, it's just something about, I love sweet drinks or relaxing drinks. So even though I don't drink a lot of alcohol, it's still like, in my mind, it's a bubble tea or a frappuccino or whatever. It's so comforting to me. So just, drinks are so nice. Um, then jellyfish, because why not have some weird, oh wait, no, these aren't jellyfish. These are plants. I was holding it upside down. Um, there are jellyfish, so spoiler alert but you know you don't have to say anything anything plant related especially this kind of art style with this kind of greenery and the cute little pots and the transparent background kills me and then here are the jellyfish it's so who would pair all these things together and yet all of them are just so delightful all these weird jellyfish come on and then here we have um jars but okay, here's what's weird about the jar. So at first you're like, um, okay, why are there people in jars? Like little anime characters in jars? I'm not an anime person by any means, but is that Pikachu? Oh my gosh, there's Pikachu in a jar. I'm surprised, I bet that's like a copyright violation because this is not put out by Nintendo, I'll tell you that much. Or by whichever, Wizard of the Coast or whoever has license to Pokemon. But look at that i bet these are all characters from like animes that people who like anime would know but to me it's just like so weird are those people kissing why wow, so weird very strange and then last but certainly not least it's always good to have a newspaper washi i think these actually have english words yes old vintage newspapers it looks like they're actually taken from somewhere too because if you really focus in you can read what it says that one says sure gut and black are yeah something about the county primary that one repeats a lot so very cool washi tape all of it highly recommend we'll link below and then if we go back down here you can see i have the sticker that's coming up now, this is partly because this is supposed to be a reusable sticker, so it's not going to be as adhesive as my other stickers, but also because of the paper in this journal is just not good at taking adhesive. So it's a little bit of A, a little bit of B, but this sticker is from the Button It's Sticker Anthology, which was recommended to me once I purchased 
or put in my cart the antiquarian th sticker anthology you know other things you might like or people who bought this also bought so i thought this was by the same publisher it's actually not so the antiquarian sticker book is from um it's from odd dot and this one's from dk which is much bigger uh, but the style is very similar. It, it looks like it's from the same publisher. It seems like one might have borrowed from the other. I'm not sure who came first, but it's too similar to be a coincidence. But lots of gorgeous pictures of just, oh, look, there's caterpillars. My heart just almost stopped. Oh, an inchworm. I can't, I can't even look at this. It's too cute. So yeah, this one has a lot of different categories though. I will show you. There's like the desert and it even has titles for them. So desert, rainforest, and there's that leaf I took out was from the rainforest. That garden and aquatic where they have a bunch of lily pads, which I go nuts for lily pads. And then they also have um, the best category, which I just forgot, which is woodland. Yes, and it has all the trees and the leaves and things. And then here is another sticker, a couple more stickers from the Antiquarian sticker book, also reusable, also coming kind of up. This is from my Halloween haul. This tape is coming up too. It, it, this tape is usually pretty good. This isn't normal for it to be coming up like this. And then finally, just a little paper and some more washi from just a big old box of Recollections washi tape I got on sale a long time ago. And that is the end of my pre-decorated pages so far. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, as this entire journal falls apart, anything that you would like to know more information about if I glossed over it and you have questions about products that you're interested in for yourself because I think a lot of times with things like journaling we can get kind of caught up in trying different things and if it doesn't work for us it kind of sucks so I can give more details so you don't have to spend money without knowing that you're gonna like it because um, there's a little bit of risk there. I for one in conclusion am enjoying this journal a lot. I'm doing a lot of writing in it but I'm kind of really really ready to move on because of the the adhesion issues i miss my fountain pens it's frustrating to have to hold it open while i'm writing and all that stuff so i'm trying to enjoy my time i'm almost out of it but um yeah it's time to move on 